Welcome back to the HUD everyone, I'm Zaccaroni, and at the very first Nintendo Direct of this year, I was expecting new details on Bayonetta 3, given that Platinum had announced it two years ago. But what we got instead was a new IP set in a cyberpunk city fighting off aliens as police officers, and I was like, just like everyone else who saw this, um, you do know you got Bayonetta 3 in development, right Platinum? But hey, I'm patient, so I'll wait another year or so for Bayonetta 3, but right now, let's talk about Astro Chain, shall we? So the big gimmick in Astro Chain is that you are controlling two characters at the same time, and immediately, I was reminded of V from Devil May Cry 5, where you need to command V's companions, while V will deliver the finishing blow when they are weak enough. But unlike V, the main character can attack with the Batana, which I mistakenly called it the Bacton in my toppings video, thanks a lot speaker, and he or she can switch to a cleaver against big enemies and a pistol against flying enemies. Also, he or she can control the second character in real time just by holding down the left trigger that can automatically attack enemies when they are near to them. Now I had a little trouble with this because not only you are controlling the legion, but you are also dealing with the camera as well, which can be frustrating when I tried using the chain to restrain enemies in place. But after playing it for a few hours, I started to appreciate the fundamentals of the game, and I utilized the legions in many creative ways, like chaining them up and then press a button to deliver an all-out attack when done correctly. However, while there is a lot of creativity of using the legions for creative combos, I don't think I quite enjoyed it as previous Platinum titles, mainly because I think playing as one character is more accessible for me really. Plus, the dodging is not that responsive at times, and the legions can be frustrating to position because they move if you flick the right analog stick too quickly when doing platforming sections. Also worth pointing out, I actually played the first 7 chapters on the default casual because I wanted to master the ins and outs of combat in case it were too complicated for me. So in chapter 8, I decided to bump the difficulty down since I now got the hang of this game, but the only difference is that I get less recovery lives when I go down, and a letter grade at the end of each fight. However, the letter grade system is sort of a confusion really because I took so many hits from enemies in a few battles, but for some reason, I got an S plus at the end of them. And then I discovered something that I should have paid attention to while doing my top end video on this. It doesn't rate me for doing so well, it rates me for doing certain things like headshots, utilizing my legions, and doing perfectly timed dodges, which makes sense because it's not really like other spectacle fighters, but it didn't feel that satisfying to me. I mean, I don't want to be judged on what things I need to do, I want to be judged on how well I did, even if I don't care about the rating system, which I mentioned in my Devil May Cry 5 second helpings. Also, side cases are pretty much hit and miss really, with ones involving talking to civilians with their problems or doing extra fights, while others involve moving cars or using motion control to carry boxes, which are less exciting than the main game itself. I do have the option to complete them to get extra currency to level up and buy items, but they are the only way to get a higher letter grade despite how many S's I got during each fight. And then there are stealth sessions that are slow, with unit placements poorly placed that can instantly see me, and while the game looks good despite running at 30 frames per second, the setting is incredibly bland. I mean, I get a lot of people comparing the city to Ghost in the Shell and they're right really. Plus, the story is uninteresting, with some characters I end up not caring, and a predictable twist that was already coming, and the sibling you pick won't do any talking throughout the game which makes him or her less interesting, while the other does all the talking but sort of end up as a whiner. Case in point, in chapter 3, Akia was having a go at my sister, yep, I baked my character on my sister, name classified by the way, for trying to be a hero for saving his life. But if this game did have a dialogue option, then I would have made this said, chill out man, I was trying to save your hairy marshmallow back there not being competitive for being a real life Robocop who used aliens as Pokemons, gee. In fact, the only thing I got from the story is Platinum's last game, Nier Automata, because that game had a better story, and this one is trying too hard to be like Nier Automata. I mean, if you want to port Nier Automata to Switch Platinum, then just port Nier Automata to Switch. I'm sure Switch players won't mind the lowered down graphics. 
And for the final slice, well, it started off straightforward, but then it started to throw bosses after bosses without giving me any breather, which it all wrapped up with an overcooked final boss who had a lot of health and an instant kill move that made me want to bite the Astro Chain in rage. So in conclusion, Astro Chain is still a good title in Platinum Games Collection, despite having a lot of extras that weren't necessary for a game about beating up aliens as the long arms of the lore. And with that, that's your second helpings of Astro Chain. I hope you appreciate my opinions, and if you like what you see, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. But until then, I'm Zaccaroni. Enjoy your pizza, and I'll see you next time.